Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we continue our help desk system with Google Sheets, Google Forms and Google Apps Script. So as always, I'd like to begin with a quick recap of what we've done in the past. So basically, this is a Google Sheet I set up ready to uh, receive responses from a Google Form. This is my Google Form. It's a very simple Google Form that actually only has an email and area of requirement and what is the requirement. So these three parts, but through Google Apps Script, I create a consecutive requirement number or code. I separate the date and the hour. I bring uh, the responsible depending on the area, depending on the area, I go here to areas and see, okay, for area right now, the responsible is Marie and her email is this one. So I bring the responsible and I bring the email here. I have this double email because I was when, when I did the tests in the past videos. Okay. So this is what I have. And finally here, I cannot see, but I create a status. Once the, the first time a requirement is created, it automatically brings this open status is an open requirement. I'm not expert in help desk systems. So you can tell me if I'm wrong, if there are better ways of doing this, I'm just going by intuition. And I created a, some columns so I could put here when it is open, which is the date it was opened that actually is the same date. So the, the date in which the requirement was made. So maybe I'm repeating myself, which date it starts processing and which date is sold. And we, we send an email. Once the requirement is done, it sends two emails, one to the customer and one to this responsible. So they know that a new help desk case is ready for them. So it is open. So what we can do, what we're going to do today is that the responsible can come here and say, okay, I'm starting processing. And then it starts the date of processing. And when it is finished, he comes and said, okay, it's canceled because it didn't work out. So here we can say date solved or closed better. So either if it say solved or canceled here, it will bring the date. So then I can do some stats. And at the end of the month, I can say, how long does my cases uh, last? Okay. And with this, I think we can finish our project for now, unless you can tell me this is missing. This other thing is missing for now with this last video, we can have a complete system that works from the moment a, a customer does a requirement until some of my staff solves it. Okay. So one thing I could do is here, create a constant. That is called the sheet ID, for example. And it will be this one, but right now it's not this one because I copied the sheet. So here it starts with one L six and this new one starts with, with one MB is this one. So I'm going to copy it until the O and I'm pasting it here. So that way I don't have to paste it here. And then here, I'm just going to change this for sheets ID also down here. Well, I already visualized what we could do in a following video is do some more professional emails uh, to send. And, and another thing that is missing once we finish is to send an email once the case is closed to the, maybe with a, with a survey for the customer or something like that. We could remove this. This is not necessary anymore. So the code looks a bit cleaner. Let's create a new, a new requirement. So let's go to our form. Let's put anything here. Let's choose. Let me see. I think I have all my areas to my email. Yeah. Perfect. But with different alias. So let's refunds show me the money submit apparently it's been recorded so let's go to our sheets here excellent everything is working well the date the requirement code the email the area the requirement the responsible and email and in theory 
the customer should have received one and Marie should have received another. So let's go to the customer. That's, that is my personal email. Here it is. Hello, thank you for your requirement. We are processing it and you will hear from us soon. The number of your requirement for future reference is six. <laughs> Maybe we can have a more, a more sophisticated code, but for now it works well. Well, regards, excellent. And now let's go to our to the email of our staff member. Here I have it. Hello, you've been assigned the help desk system case number six. Oh, here I need a an, an space. Help number here by the user. Okay, by the user. This uh, again dot and maybe uh, a line break. So dot line break. The requirement is and okay perfect so now the person responsible will know when she has a new one uh, she has a case okay it's working perfectly excellent so what we're going to do is to fill out this this one is very easy date open because it's the same one but a, a timestamp date an hour and we already have it if i'm not mistaken so here in my add answer here i have this timestamp so i don't need anything more just add the timestamp after status here in my append row where do i have it here append row area requirement responsible responsible email open and here i can put a timestamp that's it save and let's run another one, okay? Just to see that it's working. Now technical, nothing works. Submit. And here now I have my data opened. This is what I want. So the final thing I'm going to do is very simple, but this I cannot do it in my code, in my forms. I need to do it in my code, in my Google Sheets, is that when, uh, here, Sebastian for, from technical comes and say, okay, I'm going to start working on it right now. And I click on processing. So the moment I start, I click on processing here, it will start. It will put a new timestamp to know when did he start processing it. Okay. So we're going to extensions, app script. We're going to create our first code in our sheet and let's call this change status. So the first thing we're going to do is to see where the user is at. We, many people do this with an event, with an E, but uh, I'm not so keen on that. I prefer another method. So we go to spreadsheet app dot get active range. So this is the range where the user is currently at. And let's call this active or active cell. Now I need some properties of this active cell. The first property I need is the sheet where it's at with get sheet because I only want to trigger this change status when we are in our requirement sheet. Okay. And let's call this active sheet. Many people do this directly in the conditional putting this, but I, I like my codes to be clear for the person that is looking at them and th these are instructional videos. So, when, when you're now doing your own projects, maybe you can condense a lot of things, but this, uh, for education purposes, I think it's better, even if we have more lines, to be very clear what each line does. The names of the variable help a lot to know what everything does, okay? So we have the sheet. Now, another thing we need is the row, the column, because I'm going to trigger it once we're at this column I. So I need the active column active column and this will be the active cell from my active cell i will call the method get column i also need the row why because i don't want this to trigger in my header just from the row to up so this is active row and it will be active cell dot get row finally this is columna from colombia the final thing is my value active value or just value and it will be active cell dot get value. 
Okay, why? Because depending if it's if this is open, processing, closed, or canceled, it will do different things. If it's open, it won't do anything. So let's go. Now we can do our conditional. So with an if function, I can put some conditions so that if these conditions are true, then we can do something. So the first condition is that active sheet is this requirement sheet. So actually I do need a method from this active sheet that is the name, get name. So if when I get the name, the name equals, double equals to requirements, then we're doing well. This is the first condition, but I need more conditions. When I need more conditions, I'm going to use this double ampersand. Well, this or this other one that is for or conditions. In this case, I need and conditions. That means that I need this condition to apply and the next condition to apply. The next condition is that active column equals to, in my case, it's this I1, so the column number nine. So this is the second condition. So I need that both conditions are true. This is why I uh, connect them with this double ampersand because both need to be true. I need a third one. It means that my active row should be greater than one because I don't want it to work in the row number one. So these are the three main conditions. There's one other, but I'm going to separate it in nested ifs. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. So the first nested if, one last condition, and is the active value. So I'm going to say that if the active value equals to processing, I think, I put processing. Let's change this to open again so that we can see this in action. If active value equals to processing, then what I'm going to do is put a timestamp here in the column K. That's it, no more. So in my active row, but in the column K. So let's do it. Maybe I don't need brackets. Maybe I can do it directly here. I can say in my active sheet, I'm going to get a range that consists of the active row and the column 11. Finally, I'm going to set the value to a new date. So I can put here inside new date and that's it. One other thing we could do, similar to what we did in our code in the forms, where I put some constants here up just to make it easier. In the future, we could also do some constants here. There are two constants that are looking right at me that I could change. The column of the status is this one and the column of the processing. So I could put here call status and this will be nine. And another one that is call processing, it will be 11. So now I can change this to call status and this to call processing. And it looks much, much nicer. And if in your project, once you're copying this or copying the template or whatever, you if this is not nine for you, but 12, then you just change it here and you don't have to go and look in which line do I have to change it? No, just, you just change it in the configuration constants, let's call it, okay? Perfect. Now I have for the process. So let's now do it for the closed. So we're going to do another condition else if. So different from the processing, if active value is equal to closed. Now the date, I'm not going to put it here, but here in the next one. So I'm going to create another constant that is the column closed. Okay, so if it is closed or maybe not closed, solved would be better. I like this better, solved. Because I could have solved or canceled because maybe it didn't belong to me or whatever. So I prefer this solved. So here I'm going to say that if active value is solved or, and this is where these two lines work. If any of these two conditions apply, if the active value is solved or the active value is canceled, any of both, then I'm going to do something similar to this. 
Now I don't know why I put brackets. I don't need the brackets because it's just one line. I'm going to say active sheet, get range, active row, but not call processing, but call closed. The date will be uh, the, the current date. So this is very important to train your people that once they solve it, they have to come immediately here and put solved or put cancelled because the date will be in the moment. Of course, they can change it later. So maybe in the future, we can see a way to protect these columns so that the, the, the same person cannot change them, but only the timestamp will do it. So I think that's it. We only need one last thing and is that this change status, yeah. we are going to place it inside an unedit function. Let's see if it works. I think it works because we're, we don't have to connect with any other service for now. So we're going to put change status here. Why I'm doing this? So that it works uh, once the person selects a status. So let's save this and let's try it. Processing. So it did work, but I need to have the same format. So I have the time here. Excellent. And now if I go to solve, ah, my, my mistake, I put here call closed 11 and actually it's 12. Save. And again, let's put processing. When I put processing again, it will overwrite my start processing date. So this, this is something we could, we could check in the future to fix. And finally, I'm going to go to solve and I have here my solve again. Let's put an hour. It depends on if you're measuring this on hours or on dates. We're going to copy this format here and maybe also down control. I copy with control C, I go down with control shift and down and here with edit, I'm going to paste just the format. So that's it there. Are, I, I thought this was the last video, but I think we can have another one and we could, for example, send an email once this is solved. I need to change some things here because the on edit won't work when I send the email. So I have to do a manual trigger when I send an email. This is a thing we could do. The other thing we could do is protect these columns. So I'm going to write it in my to do. So this is send email when solved. Here it's uh, protect status timestamps. What else can we do? We could do a more, more professional emails maybe with an, with an HTML template, maybe you can include images or do some much more elaborate uh, emails and that's it. I don't think there's much more things to do, but you can tell me if there are things missing. So this is it. I hope you like it. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you, you support me even either by subscribing to the channel or by going to the Patreon and downloading the templates. So you don't have to start from scratch. Thank you so much. See you next time.